Look at the book of Matthew 24. In the book of Matthew 24, verse 3, it says, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they asked, or they said, when will this happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of age? Jesus answered, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. The first sign that Jesus said the church should watch out for at the time that he will come back is deception. Many will mingle with the church of God and deceive God's people in the past 10 to 15 years, that has been happening in the church of God in alarming rates. The next verse, it says, you will hear of war and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. I want to say this to you that over the past 100 years, this world has gone through a series of world wars. As Jesus prophesied about 2,000 years ago. He says all these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and to put to death, to be put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. If you look at the past 20 years to 25 years, hatred against Christianity had increased so rapidly. So the place whereby parliament of nations began to legislate against Christian ethics. And if you look at, as Jesus said, we are being hated by all nations. And it says that many false prophets will appear, verse 11, and deceive many people. The church of God has been stormed by false prophets over the past few years, so terribly. And many people have been deceived. Now look at this, verse 12. Shall we read it together? Let's read it again. I have met a good number of people who have come into this house. Some of them, when they were told about this church, they said, I have had enough to those who invited them. They said, I've been to many places. I'm fed up of going to church. Listen to me. The Bible says, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of many will grow cold. I want to challenge you. Are you one of those whose love have grown cold? If you are, listen a little bit further. What causes the love of people to grow cold? Lucifer. How? He will increase wickedness in the church. The church of God is supposed to be a place you come and see holy people. But it's not so now. It used to be like that. The church of God is a place where you come to see a minister of God and he's a minister of God. It used to be so. But in this hour, you have to look very well. And because of this increase of wickedness, both outside the church and within the church, this week we have been talking about marriage, marriage seminar, isn't it? You know, when they were asking questions on, on, on uh, Friday here, on marriage seminar, the questions that were asked are so interesting. But you know, some of those questions that was asked, when I was young, Christians can't ask such questions because there's no need for it. We know the truth. But in your own time, a lot of people who go to church do not know the truth because they have been exposed to liars so much. And of course, in your time, you come to, those of you who go to churches where the truth is preached, because some of them are watching me on the, on the net right now, I want your minister showing you the truth in the Bible. You listen to a popular minister on television who lies. 
And unfortunately, some people have, you know, accepted the lies of those people as against the truth that their little pastor is teaching them in a very small church somewhere. And then when they beat their fingers, they get disappointed. When those ministers strike, they get disappointed. Why do you have divorced so much in the church of God today? Is increase of wickedness. Why do you have rebellion so much in church today? Is increase of wickedness. Listen to me. What is the target of wickedness in the church? Why should a Christian be a liar? Increase of wickedness. Why is the devil doing that? To dampen the love of many who are standing faithfully. But let me say something to you. If a pastor commits adultery, a pastor sleeps with somebody else's wife, one pastor stole money somewhere, another pastor is a vagabond. All those things have nothing to do with you. If you decide not to look at the word and you decide to take the son of your life by those who are workers of evil, you pay with your life after death. Because the Bible did not say the love of all will wax cold. There are still people in the household of God who still love God, regardless of what is happening. There are still members of churches who are still faithful to God, regardless of what is happening. There are still some who wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb daily. There are still mouthpiece of God on earth speaking the word of God. You need to know that Jesus warned you, evil will increase. To the extent of trying to extinguish the love of many. But I love the next verse. Let's read that next verse again. What did he say? But he who what? Say it again. Who will be saved? Who will be saved? If you are one of them, wave your hands to me. It doesn't matter what the devil throws at this world. We will stand. Listen to me. If you have knowledge that Jesus had prophesied all this degradation, the addition that's happening, then when they happen, you, you don't worry yourself. Those who stand firm, it means some people will still stand firm. Others may fall away. There are some who remain standing. In the battlefield, some die, some are maimed, but some come back victorious. I want to encourage you that you should devote yourself from verse 12. Those who have known the Lord before, who served God zealously before, people who have encounters of God before, but now they have nothing. They come to church only on Sundays. Even on Sundays, they feel sleepy and they sleep and never come to church. They choose and pick when to serve God and how to serve Him. But these people are people who have tasted the power of the Spirit, who have been committed to serving God. But because of the influence of evil, they turn away. Don't join that group. But join the group of verse 13 of people who Regardless of what happens, do you know something about salvation? We cannot be saved, but you can be saved. Salvation is not a matter of me and my wife, or my wife and I, or my wife and my children, no, or myself and my friend, no. Salvation is a unilateral decision of a singular man to follow Jesus Christ, the true Son of God, and to become like Jesus Christ on earth. A man who makes those decision must look unto Jesus throughout his life. You cannot afford to be detracted by the manifestation of Satan in this age. He says, those who stand firm, but he who stands firm, to the end, will be saved. Let me give you a few references. Jesus continued to speak. 
He said, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. There is a mandate for us to teach, to take the word of God to the ends of the earth. Christians, let me tell you something. How can you fulfill verse 14? Start fellowship in your offices. Fellowship easily can be started. You know all these internets you use, Facebook you use? Instead of spending time on Facebook watching nonsense, use Facebook to present Jesus to some people. The scripture that God bless you in the morning, release it to the whole world. Talk about it with your office mates. If anybody can tell you about politics, tell him about Jesus. If anybody can say hello to you, tell him about Jesus. The right anyone has to tell you about his interest, also in law, gives you the same right to tell him about your interests. Don't shut your mouth in preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let the whole atmosphere be charged. You know, in the questions that they asked this week, I came to recognize uh, one of the questions that looks so strange. They said there is a minister who is teaching something about sex, and they call it missionary way. I've never had it in my entire existence. And unfortunately, some Christians believe it. Why? The Christians who believe it are the Christians who just Christian by mouth. Because anybody who reads the word of God, whenever the evil one comes, you know it. For you not to be able to discern from the voice of the devil and the voice of God, then something is wrong with your intellect. Hallelujah, somebody. When they are doing Bible study here on Tuesday, where are you? When some people gather on Friday to pray, where are you? When others gather here Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, where are you? Listen to me. The gospel of the kingdom must be in your lips. Now, let me scare you a little bit. All of us are going to deeper waters now. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one on the road, on the roof of his house, go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get it. To get his club. How dreadful. Verse 19. It will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Look at what is happening after the desolation. Now. Look at the incidents that is happening in Syria. Pregnant women, nursing mothers. In a big mess. Pray that your flight will not take place in the winter. Let's go further down. Verse 21. For then there will be a great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. Look at this. There will be a great distress, unequaled. The evil that is happening in your time, if this world continues for 50 years, None of you can bear it. Let me say this. You know, the Western world is so sophisticated. Our government in UK, Europe, America, boast of power. But do you know something? Our government in Europe now have been confronted with a terror they don't understand. Our military in Europe and America are used to fighting war with people who are afraid to die. So they master the terrain. But in these days, they are fighting war with people who are ready to kill themselves. So our intelligence don't understand it. Our military don't understand it. Can you imagine a man coming to you who have put bomb all around himself? All right? And getting to you and exploding himself. What time will you have to think to carry your gun? Everybody is dead and gone. 
there is evil to the highest level. If I talk to you about some other things I know, some of you will not be able to sleep. Listen to me, therefore. Jesus said, when that abomination is sitting on the temple, what will happen then is that a time of great distress will happen unequal. Listen to me. Jesus says there will be a time of distress such that had never been on earth before. This time there is distress that had never happened from creation till today. Human beings are heartless terribly. You can't imagine the things they do and they praise themselves for it. And they boast when they do the evil. But the strangest thing is this. Mention a nation in the world. They are there. They are there. Why is Jesus saying these things? Listen further. Verse 22, he says, If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. If God does not intervene to this present world, in 50 years' time, you cannot survive it. You know, when I look at all those who are just uh, within, who are young now, okay, I pity them for the next 25 years, and I pity the children that they'll be giving birth to. If something does not stop this insanity that is all over the whole world, you tell me how you will be free. It is easy for you and I to stay in England. We can go to Tesco's. We can buy what we want to buy. We can eat what we want to eat. Imagine Tesco, you went to Tesco tomorrow. Someone blew up a Tesco here. While they are looking at it, another Tesco is blown up there. While they are trying to sort it out, another Tesco is blown up in some, some country. And there's this other all over the place. Will you be able to go to Tesco's? You imagine people who have been displaced in their own territory who have become refugees in another land right now. Oh, that cannot happen in England. Who told you that? There is no security. If that could happen to us, you will not tell me that we are secure in our defense. You will not tell me that what happened in Syria cannot reach the shore of this country. You will not tell me that a time may not come in England that People in England are running out of England as refugees somewhere. Really, the science on the world tells you and I, it's a matter of time. The bomb will explode. Listen to me. Now, we have to, in the church of God, we have to tell ourselves the truth. Why is all these things happening? Jesus said it. The Bible says the power of the lawless man is now at work. Satan is influencing government of nations, decisions of parliament of nations. Satan is influencing organization, even penetrating the church to the extent that the things that you see today, the things you see is change and decay. Jesus said it. If those days had not been short, cut short, no one will survive. He says, no one will survive because of the elect, those who believe in Jesus. God will shorten the days. If I don't say anything more from here, I can tell you and you can understand that God cannot allow this to keep going. He will put a stop into all this in a short time. What is the stop? Let's see. The next verse, it says at that time, if anyone says to you, look here, look, here is the Christ, or there is he, do not believe it. I was told that some people are buying tickets in America for rapture. I had that yesterday. And some stupid people are paying that useless stupid man. For the rapture, that when rapture will come, if you don't pay that money, you will not go. Can you imagine 
Godless ignorance are paying a man who is a liar money that if they give him that seed, they will rapture. Hey, listen to me. The Bible said, Jesus said, when all these evil, terrible things are happening, don't be alarmed. He said, people will say that Jesus has come here, don't go. They will say miracles are happening here, don't go. Don't let miracles, you know, I, I'm always amazed when Christians are running about, when they hear that there are miracles happening in some place they run about. I can't understand it. It is like they are telling you that some people have head somewhere, and you carry your own head, and you are going to there to look at their head. Oh, there are some people there who can eat with their mouth. Huh? You are excited. Oh, some people can eat with their mouth there. Let's go and look at them. That's how it looks like. It's so stupid and foolish for a person that has been washed by the blood of the Lamb, a person in whom the Holy Spirit of God lives, to carry the God inside you, and you are being deceived by miracles that are performed by useless junters. The Bible did not say by their miracles you will know them. It said by their fruit. A miracle worker who cannot teach the word of God in depth is of the devil. If a man has the spirit of God and the calling of heaven, the first manifestation is his ability to open the Bible and reveal God to your heart. Anybody who performs any miracle who cannot do it is a lie. The last verse of Matthew says, and God worked with them confirming the sign, Mark, confirming the sign with, with, with their, their word with great signs and wonders. Let me say something to you, therefore. Jesus said in, my, in Luke 9, go, preach the word, heal the sick. In chapter 10, he says, go, preach the word. He didn't say heal the sick, then preach the word. Preach the word first and heal the sick. Any minister of God acclaimed under heaven who cannot teach the word of God deeply, but he performs miracles is of the devil. Ministers of God whose house are wayward. Wife are way, the wives are wayward, children are wayward. You see their children, boys with earrings and all stuff. There is nothing different between an idol worshiper and their children in Luke. Don't you understand? No matter how popular they are, it's easy to be popular through the devil. You can manipulate people and make money and ride on the best cars and live in the best houses and perform counterfeit miracles through, the, through mediums. You know something devil cannot give you? The knowledge of the world. That's the reason why I have problem with Christians who believe that everything must be attached to offering. Everything. When they preach any sermon, if you go to anywhere, you know any minister that anytime he preaches, at the end of it, he will begin to take offering. He is of the devil. Jobless, useless, bankrupt, hopeless people. Trying to give a false hope. And fools follow them. Is the scripture. Jesus said, don't believe them. Don't believe them when they come with all this nonsense. I love this, he says. For false Christ and false prophet will appear and perform what? Come on now, what will they perform? What will they perform? What did he call them? False prophets and what? And they will perform great signs and miracles to deceive even what? To deceive even what? Let me help you understand something, church, because I'm speaking to the whole world here now. I, Apostle Alfred Williams, the servant of the Most High God, Unto who the Lord himself has revealed himself several times. I want to tell you that to understand the Bible, you don't need to be intellectual. I want to tell you to know God, you don't need to be educated. He is the only one you can speak. Anyone, either educated or non-educated, 
can speak deep intellectual words through his spirit. Jesus says false prophets will rise up. Look at the book of 2 Peter very quickly. Chapter 2. How will we know them in our time? It says in verse 1, But there were also false prophets among the people, just as they will be false teachers among you. False Christ means some people will, will present themselves as Messiah. I want to show you some things going on in church. Anywhere you go to and the pastor is presented as the Savior, pack your bag and baggage and run for your life. No man can save himself, talk less to save others. There is only one Savior, his name is Jesus. Any church you go that the pastor tells you that you see anointing, 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 He's a liar. You don't have to see. Because Jesus said, Blessed that those who did not see, but yet believe. Listen to me. Any church you go to and someone say, <laughs> It's not of God. It's a liar. Because the power of God is not demonstrated in your pooing. Anywhere you go and they do their hand like this and people fall, they are all mediums. My father was a wizard. I know what I'm talking about. God is not interested in the falling of people. After all, he said, therefore, stand firm. After doing everything to stand, stand firm, therefore. God is not interested in a show. He's interested first in the salvation of man. All right? Second, to educate the mind of man so that man can become like Christ. The third is your physical healing. Listen to me. Who are false prophets? How would you know them? Look at what it says in that scripture. But there are also, we are false teachers and prophets among you, the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce you to destructive heresies. Even deny the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Now let's look at the signs of them. The Bible says many will follow their shameful ways. Today, many people go, where's the so anointing, anointing, anointing? is a lie. There is no anointing anywhere. No anointing is on anyone that is not on others. The Bible says you all have the same anointing if you are born again. Many will follow their shameful ways. No wonder people leave churches that preach the truth to follow lies. Don't be amazed by them. People will leave the church where they will rebuke you and they will teach you against sin. They will teach you to walk in the fear of God. People will leave such churches and they will go to where they manipulate them. Listen to what he says. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute as many of them not brought the ministry of God into disrespect today. They've turned the pulpit of God to be a beggarly altar. Listen to what he says. In their greed, listen to this, in their greed, not in their inspiration of the Holy Spirit, these teachers will exploit you with stories that they have made up. Every part of the Bible will turn to an offering. They preach a, a Psalm 135. They tell you to give an offering of 135. They tell people that if you want anointing of $500, stand here. You want anointing of 1,000 pounds, stand here. I cannot understand how a, a person with common sense can follow the people like that. But yet, many follow them. Even the most amazing thing to me is that I see professors, highly educated people, following fools. Listen to me. Education should help a man to know more. Read the Bible. Greed is their basis. Then teaching is their method to exploit you. With stories they have made up. The redemption of firstborn. Lies of the devil. Everyone who is a Christian needs deliverance. Lies of the devil. Jesus says, if the son they have all set you free, you are free indeed. You have generational curses, lies of the devil. 
The Bible says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He said, whoever curses you, I will curse. All those doctrines came from the pit of hell, from these greedy teachers looking for the pockets of man. Their condemnation has long been hanging upon them, and their destruction has, been, has not been sleeping. Listen to me. No one can say, because a, a pastor messed me up, there is no God. You will just die and go to hell. That's it. Because a doctor is stupid doesn't mean all doctors are stupid. Or because there is an imposter who, just, who, 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 who was just watching on television how they operate people and he set up a surgery and eventually he has cut many people open and then they discover that he's an imposter. That doesn't mean that every surgery they are imposters. It is your duty to look for where God is. I will say this to you. You see, the people who follow lie, they say are liars. Those who follow deceivers, they say are deceivers. So a, a, a deceiver cannot follow a man who is truthful. They cannot. They cannot. When they get to a place of truth, after a while they didn't see manipulation, they will run out looking for a deceiver like them. Jesus said the blind shall lead the blind and they will both fall into peace. People who are righteous in their heart, they are looking for a righteous man who knows the way to the king of heaven who can lead them into the place that God had prepared for them. Jesus says, don't follow them. Don't follow them. Someone that are, I, I tell some people sometimes, there are some people who go to church and they send their tithes to some useless men on television. The Bible did not say to you, bring all your tithe to television. It said, bring all your tithe to my storehouse. Ministry is not storehouse, it's church. They are supposed to send their tithe to their church. Some of them, their pastors are bankrupt. They are suffering. The ones who labor over them daily, they never put their tithe in the church. And their church is hopeless because they are sending all their income to the useless man who will, who will blow up all the money they're giving. Greedy people who come to manipulate and lie to people on television. Let me say something to you. If that is you hearing me, go back to your church and commit yourself to that small man who preaches the truth. Lies can lead a man only into hopelessness. There is no man who followed the path of deception that did not end up in regret. But the truth is bitter and it's hard. But those who follow it rejoice at the end. In every aspect of life. May I die the death of a righteous. Listen to me. I will soon finish now, five minutes. At that time, it says, false prophet, verse 24, Matthew 24, and false Christ will appear and perform great signs and miracles. <laughs> look at me as I am. Do I look funny in my haircut? Do I look funny in the way I dress? Do I sell anchor chiefs in church? Purportedly carrying the power of God? Have I ever sold you oil? Have I ever given you Ribena mixed with oil to drink? My father used to do that as a witch doctor. Huh? Huh? Let me tell you something about false teachers. This is what they always do. They begin to take the church through a process to demean you so that they could be exalted. Okay? But that process is so systematic and so deceitful because they tell you that those things should be performed in the name of the Lord. And before you know it, you will have become a robot. Whatever they tell you is what you do. Even contrary to the word of God, you will do it. You will say that the man of God has spoken. Woe to the one who spoke and misled the sheep, Jesus said. It will be better to tie a milestone on his neck and drown him than for him to have done that on the last day. Don't follow them. 
if you are here. If you know people who are in places like that, beg them to come out. Unto who has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For the nations of the world will see in a twinkle of an eye the manifestation of the glorious one which he will breathe upon his elect upon the earth. The old order of things shall be faced out for the new order of things shall emerge. Like a mountain that is hidden in the midst of the sea now revealed by a turbulent wind that blew off the waters. They will emerge like a new city that have been hidden under the ground and the top of the mountain of the Lord shall be made visible. And all nations shall troop into it, for it shall be said again, the word of the Lord shall come out of Zion. He says, false Christ and false prophets. Verse 29. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the nations of the earth will mourn. <coughs> People who don't accept Jesus today will mourn. They will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming out from the clouds of the sky with power and glory, and his, he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds of the earth. This is my question to you. Before I question you, in a short time, you know, Jesus said that if the days were not shortened, it would be nobody will, will survive it. This evil happening today, if it spread to Europe, we cannot survive it here. I will together now. If it spread to America, everything we rely upon, these are things that radar cannot detect. Okay? And you know it's a spirit. All right? The Western world has invented mechanism for them that they are using, which is your internet. They send the spirits through Facebook. When people start to watch them, the demon enter into them. Because through Facebook, we have seen people born again. Isn't it? Through internet, we preach the word of God, and people broke down in tears in their house, and their house was filled with the glory and the presence of God. People were healed through internet. Now, which means that by speaking a word, those who listen, the spirit behind the word, if people can see or can hear, those spirits will manifest in that environment. Abomination has become legitimate. Listen to what he says here. At that time, Jesus will appear. I will ask you, when Jesus will appear shortly and he will send his angels, will you be among those who will hear? Let me tell you how people hear. If a man will accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit of God enters into him. He becomes a son of God. It doesn't matter how reckless our lives have been. It doesn't matter how reckless our sins have been. You see, all those individuals who are Boko Haram, who are ISIS, those persons can be saved. Because a demon entered into them and they are behaving that way. When people like them hear the gospel, some of the Boko Haram now in Nigeria are now preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. I know a few number of them. God saved. One of them went to, the, went to a girl, a Christian girl. And that girl took him to church. And they have told them, never enter church. And when he went to the church, he got there. The girl took him to church. When they started praying, the power of God manifested and the demons in him were manifesting. The pastor cast out the demon out of him before he now revealed himself. He was armed when he came to the church to kill. But he got saved. And he gave a lot of information to the church and to the intelligence of Nigeria. Those human beings can be saved because with Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter the evil you have done. The Bible says, Though if the sins of a man is as dark as scarlet, if he can turn to Jesus, Jesus will clean you and you become as white as snow. He is the only one who, when you turn to him, he will never remember your sins any longer. Romans chapter, chapter 4, verse 7 and verse 8. 
Romans chapter 3, verse 20, 20, 23. It says, for all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Chapter 4, verse 12 of Acts. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which men can be saved. Jesus is the only way. There is no other way. No other way. Look at the book of John, chapter 1, verse 12. What did he say? Yet to all who received him, to those who believe in his name, he gave them the right or the power, the audacity, the adoption to be called what? Children of God. Someone can be saved today and deliver himself from the rots to come. The whole world will mourn when Jesus will come. The only person that will laugh are those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Finally, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son to the world that he may condemn the world, but that the world be saved through him. But if you look at that scripture, it went further to say, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whosoever does not believe stand condemned already because he has not believed in the name of God's only son. Somebody listening to me today can be saved. Somebody hearing me today can be saved. Let's bow our heads to pray. Our God and our King, I send out your word to every heart and every soul that I've heard. Father, may the power of the Holy Spirit arrest the heart of all who have heard me. Bringing salvation, repentance, and those who are falling away to be restored back home. You spoke about the parable of that prodigal son that when he came back, the father celebrated. You are waiting to celebrate the coming back of somebody who is hearing my voice at this hour. May the heart of man be opened by your words. Salvation enter the arena. Salvation enter the arena. <coughs> Salvation enter the arena. Father, we bless and magnify your holy name. Those who are watching and listening to me, I ask you to pray in your heart. If you do not know Jesus Christ, ask Jesus to have mercy on you. And if you have known Jesus, but you have followed deceiving prophets, or even if you also are a deceiving prophet, and you heard my voice today. I want to pray with you and lead you back to your maker. Say this after me, Lord Jesus. I thank you because you died for me. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me all my sins today. I surrender my life to you. Save me. By your blood. I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior. I confess, Jesus, you are the Son of God. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' holy name we are praying. Shall we say amen together? Amen. If you're watching me and this is your first time that you read that prayer, Contact us on the television and let us know about this decision. You are welcome into the commonwealth of sons of God. And those of you who are sitting here today, if you have sincerely spoken those words from your heart, maybe you are falling away from God and you are coming back. Maybe you have never made that decision before and you did that today. When we close this meeting, a lady will be standing over there 
and you follow her, that lady over there, you follow her to a room that is prepared for you, the Hall of Mirrors, so that we can have a word together. But I want to tell those of you who are already God's children, don't allow your love to work school. We don't have more time. Whenever Jesus comes, you cannot do any further work in the kingdom. Imagine all these days, if you have been spending time working to acquire money for livelihood, and you have not spent time winning souls and serving God, when the door is shut, you will not have privilege again to do that. Whatever a man puts into his life is what he gets from it as wages. Whatever you put into God, that is what you get. God will never give you more than what you get. So this season around, I want to tell you, I want to charge every one of you, fill this city with the gospel of Jesus. I tell you sincerely, when I saw on television yesterday, people carrying idols and celebrating idols in Ken, I was so shocked. I thought it's only in Africa they do that. I've been going into villages in Africa, destroying their idols, and getting people saved from graven images, confronting their powers, and God has been doing great signs and wonders. Now, for me to see this right in my nose in the shore of Great Britain, let me say something to you. There must be a revival in this land. And the voice of God is, who shall we send? I hope you will say, here am I, send me. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord lift up his face to shine upon you. May the keeper of Israel strengthen you in all your ways. May the covenant of the righteous be fulfilled over you. We have a few days to go to the end of this month. I declare in the name of the King of Heaven that every day remaining in the month of April shall bring forth fulfillment to your life. The half of the month is gone. You are going to the other half. Everything that you have been robbed by the devil for this month, within the next half, they shall be fulfilled. I say to you, whatever had been your request from January and month by month is going on, going by, and these requests are not fulfilled. By the authority of heaven, I declare to you today, before the end of next week, there will be manifestation. Somebody will come here in the midweek celebrating. Another person will come on Friday next week to give thanks. The things that you have said before your God and seeking him that he will do for you. He will visit you. He will fulfill what, he, what you have required as he did unto Sarah. So shall your life also be fulfilled. You will succeed in everything you lay your hands on. Every decision of hell over each member of this church are frustrated. The plans of the wicked one will not prevail over any one of you. Assignment of death and infirmity and sickness over you are counseled by the blood of Jesus Christ. The Lord will grant you long life. The Lord will grant you success. As you grow daily in stature, you will grow in the knowledge of God. When you stretch your hand, it shall be the flame of fire of the Holy Spirit. Out of your face shall come the blazing fire of the Holy Spirit. The Lord will surround you with his glory as a shield. So shall it be, and so it is. In Jesus' anointed name, amen. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. If you came here sick today, you are free from your sicknesses. In the year 1999, Apostle Alfred Williams was taken to heaven and shown what would occur up until 2015. When asked what would happen after this, the Lord answered powerfully, Behold, I am coming soon. Join Apostle Alfred Williams at the immense 3,000 seater Christ Paved Tabernacle Cathedral, Woolwich, London, in 2015, the year of God's glory. The Lord spoke to me concerning this new year. And he said to me, this year shall be the year that the glory of God shall alight upon the righteous. The glory will be so manifest in the midst of shaking that is coming upon the world. I want to encourage everyone in the house here through your lifestyle. People are watching you, marking what you do, hearing the things that you say. 
Let them see Jesus shine through your life like never before. The apostle was shown from January to June the nations will be shaken. From July to October the nations will call convocations because of these global events. And then from October onwards we will see the divine intervention of God on the world. Are you ready for the season of the Lord's return? Of course the Lord will shake the heavens and the earth and the desire of all nations will soon visit the earth. We look forward to welcoming you to our beautiful cathedral, Ebenezer Building. This stunning 3,000-seater Gothic masterpiece is a place where you will be inspired, empowered, prepared and favoured in this year of God's glory. For further information on our incredible Venue for Hire packages, contact us now. Come to the CFT Cathedral in 2015, the year of God's glory. 186 Power Street, Woolwich, London, SE 18, 6NL. Visit cftchurches.org, call 020 8316 2332. Also, over the last 25 years, Christ Faith Tabernacle has expanded across the globe. You can now join us for the explosions that are happening in our satellite churches Berlin, Germany, Ennis Island, Dublin Island, Limerick Island, Bristol, UK, Birmingham, UK, Chandigarh, India, Mararaba, Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, and Abuja, Nigeria. Come to the CFT Cathedral in 2015, the year of God's glory. 